Somebody else is up. Awesome. So this is live now. We're live. How exciting. Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Roxy's Hangout here in San Antonio. <laughs> Hang on. <clears throat> We're going to do a live broadcast. We're going to have two channels. Uh, Safir's going to channel first, and I'm going to channel afterwards. And uh, if you're out there and you feel like questions, you can uh, join the Hangout. Um, on the live broadcast, can we post uh, on the YouTube the live broadcast link? It's already posted. Okay. If I'm if I go to YouTube, how do and there's room to come in here? How do the people watching YouTube know? Oh, to come into here. Yeah, because the room's not filled yet. Right. So, so if if there's a live viewer and they want to join the the so link post, 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 post the link post. into the YouTube. Okay. So we can, all right. We'll do that. In okay. case anyone out there wants to join, we'll post it on where it's live on YouTube right now so we can, if you want to join the Google Hangout, you have to have a Google Hangout account. Mm -hmm. So uh, ask any questions after we're done channeling, and uh, I think that's about it. Let me give you who's in the room. Uh, Will, say hi. Hey. Safira. Hey. Roxy. Hey. Chris. Whoa. Booyah. Gurdan. <laughs> the magic hand. And Maria. Hi. Okay, she said hi. So we're down here in San Antonio. San Antonio, <laughs> San Antonio hanging out. We just came together and we're like, oh, they're going to come. So we're going to go, hey, maybe why don't we just have like a little get together? And we ended up, you know, a few people came. So here we are doing our thing. So uh, I'm going to have uh, Safira go ahead and start. I'm going to get out of here, put her in the center. Um, no, I'm going to move. Really? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I don't want to. Because if I drink coffee and bother you, okay. And plus, you know. Okay. So um, and Will's gonna come back there, and we have two dogs in the room you playing. Want you want to yeah. sit here? Okay. Yeah. We're gonna have uh, Maria come and sit. So I'm gonna get out of here and stop uh, chatting and uh, bring Maria over, and then Sophia's gonna start. Will you ready to come back in? I am. All right. You can stay, Chris. Okay. Yeah. Right here. Yeah, there's, there, there, there you go. Real tiny. Okay. I was just trying to add a comment. Okay. Hi, everybody. How are you? Yeah, I can't. We have to do it from another computer. Okay. Okay. So, this is my first channeling in a while, so let's Actually, see I won't be able to because who in my account wants to come through. Thank you. We shall see. We shall see. Greetings, everybody. This is uh, Rusha. Hello. Hello, Rusha. Hello, Rusha. I have been waiting for a while to be able to come and speak with you again. Coming. You're welcome. Nice to see all of you. Thank you. It is a glorious day here. It is a glorious day wherever any of you are because you make it a glorious day. You do, yes? Yes. Yes. yes, you make it a glorious day. And I would like to talk to you about playing, joy and playing. Playing is very important to have an attitude of play in all things and bring joy into all things, even if you are in pain, even if you are in emotional pain. At the moment, you can shift, shift that pain to an attitude of acceptance and joy in some small way. Yes. Is there anything any of you would like to talk about? Let's talk more about the shift. That you just said, mm -hmm. shift, shift the pain. Yes, we're talking about shifting. Some people feel like when they are stuck in a particular emotion, and my host is one of those. They feel like they are so cemented into that emotion, it is as if they feel paralyzed and cannot shift away from it. And then it becomes like a heavy weight, which drags them 
all the way down as if the earth is cracking beneath them and they are falling through. I know that you have a commercial on TV like this where some people are eating something heavy and they fall through their office because it is so heavy. And this is how some of you feel when you are stuck in a what you would call a heavy emotion. For us, it is all learning. Everything is coming and going. Everything is in movement. Everything. Think about nature. Think about the cells of a tree. Think about the leaves and the roots and how everything is moving up and everything is moving down and all of the osmosis and all of the insects. There is nothing in nature which is not in constant movement. Even a leaf leg on the ground looks like it isn't moving, looks like it is dying, but it is also shifting and returning to the earth and giving nourishment back into the earth. So everything we are experiencing is also always in movement. Everything within us is in constant movement. Even our emotions, which we may feel at the moment, become too heavy. So if you are sitting now in a position, you are sitting on a chair, sitting on a couch, sitting at your computer, wherever you are, shift yourself a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, and there you go. You have shifted your position. Have you not? This is how you can also shift your emotions. You move your mind. You move your attitude. You pick up the phone. You make a phone call. You write a letter. You reach out. You read a book. You find something that used to inspire you. You listen to a piece of music. You do anything playful as possible, even though in that moment you do not feel like playing. It is not for you play. But everything in life is actually play. It is in a movement of growth. It is in a movement of shifting. It is everything in a interconnected, interreactional movement in a constant, well, we can look at it as play because we know that eventually all of this movement and all everything you are going through is to reach your highest self and your highest soul and your highest potential, which is filled with oneness and filled with joy. This is your ultimate goal. This is your soul's goal to reach interconnectedness of oneness and joy and true love for in all things. So everything you are going through now and all of you humans go through on a daily basis is all a matter of sifting. If you take the gold inside an earth and you take a sifter and you sift and all of the dirt falls out and what is left are nuggets of gold. So all of this earth or darker, let's say, although we don't like to use the word dark and light, ah, but for your sake we will say the darkness, what feels like dark, is shifting and sifting through because underneath all of that is gold and diamonds and the most beautiful gems. This is all of you. You are sparkling and shining. You are so beautiful. And your real and true interaction with each other is that of absolute beauty and absolute giving and receiving in a perfectly harmonious nature. Yes, this is all possible to experience in the now. It is. It's not something for the future. However, the human conditioning thinks in time lineation and so you feel, I will reach that when I do A, B, and C, or when A, B, C shifts, I will reach that. You could have it now. It is not that easy for many humans to say, I can have it now, and boom, it is in the now. This is a possibility. It is not easy, but it is absolutely true and absolutely doable. Yes. So. Think of when you are in pain, think of the sifting and think of the gold that is waiting beneath all of these exp experiences which want to come out and perhaps you are somebody who is a transformer. Think of yourself also as a transformer. All of these 
dark, what you call dark, heavy, depressions, pains, emotions, they may not even be yours. You are simply taking in from the world around you, transforming it all and giving it away as light. If you see yourself in that way, then you are a beautiful, beautiful tool for transformation for others, even when they don't even realize it. Yes, you can see your pain in many different points of view so that it is doesn't have to bring you through the earth in a very crashing, heavy way. How do you feel about what I've just shared? I absolutely love it. It's so it's so good. It kind of touches upon something that I'm going through. Oh well, that is very beautiful. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Does anybody who is listening in our beautiful Yukolo guests have anything to say or any comments or questions? I am blue. Yeah. My hair is blonde and blue. Mm -hmm. My eyes are blue. Can you see a blue shade moving? around you. I am blue mm -hmm. and I emit a beautiful blue color. I love blue. Ah, yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. So we have Ray and Johannes and Brian and I don't know who else has joined since we began. Do any of you have anything? <laughs> Go ahead, Brian. Yes, Brian. Hello, dear friend. Hello, Brian. It has been a while, has it not? Yes, long, long time. I have missed spreading my joy. <laughs> it's nice that Sophia can let go a little bit more and more and just enjoy this playfulness. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, yes, yes. She has been very buried under some three-dimensional things, but she is coming out again. And this is not a judgment of right, wrong, good, or bad. It is perfectly fine. Wherever any of you are in this moment is perfect for this moment. If some of you feel you cannot deal with any of this now because you need to do with this and ABC, there's no judgment whatsoever. It is simply a matter of, well, what you call time. It is only sometimes we want to speak more, we want to share more, we want to spread more. So it is beneficial for us. However, it is not a judgment call on where somebody is in any given moment. What would you like to say or share, Brian? Um, yeah, just for me, it's been about focusing, just trying to. How you say, um, there you go. Can you start over, Brian? Yeah, yeah. Uh, mine is just the focusing. Uh, this past probably week, I week or two, it's just for me, it's been a struggle focusing on one thing at a time. Just the mind is wandering so much, you know. Yes. Yes. Do you mean focusing on your tasks and the daily basis where you feel you are duty bound and that contradicting your spiritual work, although there is really no difference between the two? Or how do you, what kind of things are you feeling in your focusing that you are missing out on if you feel you are missing out on anything? Sometimes I feel like I should be doing something on one area, but I get so easily distracted in another. I see. I understand. Okay. The mind, the thought, the energy of thought is unlimited. You can be focusing on peeling potatoes and sending your thoughts somewhere else and doing something else with your thoughts 
while you are peeling those potatoes and voila you have done two things at once have you considered that multitasking <laughs> in other words the spirit knows no bounds right. people say Oh, God says he loves me. Oh, no, God loves me, but I'm in China, and God loves me. Oh, but I'm in India, and God says he loves me. How could God love everybody at the same time? Because thought and love and the energy of love and thought together have no limit. It can be everywhere at the same time. You can be one place with your body. You can be focusing on changing diapers, but with your heart energy, you can be sending out love. You can be sending out positive thoughts. You can be sending out healing. You could be having a conversation in your mind. And you are doing... I get things. frustrated on myself more than anything because I, I have a hard time focusing sometimes. Especially, the, I guess, the energies, the way of the planet, the way it is now. It's just so much. Ah, do you mean... You have trouble focusing on that which you are doing in that very moment? Yeah, like something that I should be getting done sometimes, especially when it comes to like the homework and school, I'm easily distracted. It's hard to be focused sometimes. It just depends on the that week. Uh, I get yeah. easily distracted. Yes, yes. Well, are you a last-minute person? I can be. <laughs> yes. Well, you know what? This is fine because Zafira was also in college not so long ago and she beat herself up for not finishing her assignments on Tuesday and she thought, well, if I do them on Tuesday, I won't have to do them on Friday when they're due. And so she beat herself up from Tuesday until Friday and voila, she did them on Friday under pressure, but it was excellent because she is a last-minute person. And once she accepted, hey, I'm a last-minute person. I will do this on Friday, because I, you know what? I'm going to end up doing it on Friday anyway. So why, why punish is that? I get so dis easily distracted on that. Yes, that is understandable. It yeah. is a judgment you are putting on yourself. I'm putting on myself, and, yeah. Yes, and a pressure you are putting on yourself, yes. Hmm. But you know that when you actually do the task, it is excellent, oh, absolutely yeah. excellent. Is this not true? Yeah, I, I, I put too much pressure on myself. I don't know why that yes. is. Yes, yes, mm. yes. Well, I would suggest that in those moments that you are feeling pressure, that you take a break and go out and do something and play. Yeah. Do some jumping. Jumping is a good way to shift all of that <sighs> whatever is going on in your mind and heart and confusion. Yes. <laughs> it's a great way to lift to, to declutter clutter. Put on some music, jump around, get on a trampoline, roll around with your kids, be a child. Be a child. Because everything you need to do, it does eventually get done. And even if it's late, it doesn't really matter all that much, really, as long as it's not two weeks or a month late where it affects your grade. But you do get what you have to do done. You do. So I would suggest play in between, get up, walk around, play, go out, anything that brings you joy. What brings you joy for five minutes when you're taking a break doing your homework? Sounds good. Brian. Thank you so much. Yes. You're welcome. What kind of thing brings you joy for five or ten Dancing. minutes? Singing and dancing. Well, <laughs> there you go. Dance and sing and sing and dance and let it all go. Because in the eye of eternity, your assignment getting done on Wednesday instead of Friday, although it is important in your now because you have signed the dotted line and made a commitment to do these things, however, they are rather insignificant in the very, very largest picture. I'm not suggesting what you're doing is insignificant, only if you can think in that way just a little bit and lighten the pressure, take off the load, take off the load, and dance and jump and shift. Shift. When you're feeling that pressure, when you're feeling that you are beating yourself up, 
with, oh my, I forgot to do this and I have to do that. <sighs> well, move the physical position of your body and everything shifts with it. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Brian, and you are and will do excellent in whatever it is you are attempting to accomplish. Absolutely. All right, I'll pass it to another. Much love, my friend. Thank you. Much love. Much love to you. Thank you. I have a question, Rushan. My name is Will. Arusha. Arusha. My sorry. It's okay. Rushan is another entity. Arusha. Yes. Rushan. Yes. So my question is, you're speaking about when the burdens come and and you're suggesting a shift to help when we receive those, when we're feeling those feelings, just to shift or get up and move. Now, what do you suggest we do as people who have loved ones that are going through this as well? And besides giving them unsolicited advice, what can we do to support them? Are they near you physically? At times. Yes. Pick them up. Shift their body for them. If they can, will not shift it themselves. Take them somewhere. Give them a little play, a little joy. Give them a different perspective without teaching. Just offer a different perspective. And then the light of getting away from all of that, they may say, oh my, I have not thought of it in that way. And that little bit of a shift will help them feel lighter about what they are experiencing. And their shift will affect those around them who they feel might be causing their distress or if they feel they are causing their own distress, whatever. Any kind of a shift changes their perspective on those around them and themselves. Awesome. Does that help you in some way? Absolutely. Kind of Absolutely. I thank you for helping me shift. <laughs> Okay, because I You're felt myself welcome. shift right there, and I feel the awesomeness. Thank you so much. Arusha. Uh, you're very welcome. So much love to you, dear Will. So much love. Arusha. Arusha. <laughs> Did I get it right the last time? I, Arusha? Arusha, yes. Arusha. Honestly, I am not offended if you say another name. It doesn't really matter all that much, except it is nice for the sake of identifying to some degree, only to some degree, there is no, in oneness, there is no holding on to an absolute identity. There is always the freedom of identity shifting because we are constantly growing, constantly expanding, constantly moving. And so, Arusha today, maybe Mirala tomorrow, Maybe Zuhan <laughs> in another few years. It doesn't matter all that much. What matters is the essence. The essence. Yes. <laughs> is there anyone else here who has a question or a comment? I don't have curiosity. I was just thinking if you know the cash. <laughs> Of course, I know them. Of course, I know the cast. We are not on the I same planet, but we do know each other. Yes. Say hello to them. Of course. Mm -hmm. Oh, I the I cash, the cash, yes. I get, I get. Ah, <laughs> the cash, we send you so much love from Maria and from everybody else. Yeah. And and, oh, he sends all his love back to you, back to you, back to all of you, his love. The best thing we can do for you is to bring you joy and lightness and the hope that you are transforming and shifting. Whether you even know it or not, you think you have to do so much hard work to shift and to grow? No. You are shifting and growing in any case. Yeah. The difference is, those of you who have some form of awakeness, you transform yourself voluntarily. And you move forward 
or backward and then forward again, sideways, left, right, but you are aware of your transformative movement as to as much degree as your consciousness allows you in that moment. Those who are less awake or not yet awake, they are just as much loved as those who are awake. They sometimes... <laughs> oh, oh, you poor dear. Oh, there was a dog here who's coughing. In any case, those who are less awake, they are transforming as well. The only difference is their transformation is sometimes forced upon them. And they take it in so much of a heavier fashion because they are not aware that they are transforming. But it is the inner soul of every being to reach its original blueprint of self in the universe. So your soul will create transformation, consciously or unconsciously. The only question is, do you do it voluntarily and move yourself forward? Or does it come from behind and push you forward? This is one of the big differences. And those of you who are more awake and are aware of your transformational process are able to spread that out more around you and help others begin their transformational process as well. This is another advantage of being awake, so to speak. But everybody has a contribution, no matter where they are and what they're doing, even if it's a negative contribution. If you meet somebody, you think, oh, I can't stand that person. But they are helping you shift. Love your enemy. This is in many of your religions. Love your enemy. Somebody comes along, you say, oh, this is feels like an enemy. Well, this is your chance to love your enemy. Jesus said, anyone whose child would come to them and say, I need food, who gives them food? This is normal. This is giving, but it is not really giving beyond yourself, where it hurts to give, in a way, so to speak. If you give to your enemy, you are of a transformation. Yes, love your enemy. It is one of the absolute most challenging edicts that Jesus gave to your world. But the most inspirational and transformational when you are able to do it. An enemy is not always somebody who wants to kill you or shoot you or do physical harm. There can be many forms of, quote, enemy. Somebody who is in a different mentality than you are. Someone who does not want to believe you. Someone who just fights tooth and nail against everything you are trying to give to them and, and represent to them. This is always your chance. Everything is a chance to go beyond and to grow and to shift and to bring love and joy and playfulness around you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're very You're welcome. Okay. Can, I add, <laughs> can I add something to it? Oh, yes, Gabriel. Hello. Yeah, I feel like we always are sending, no matter what, we always are sending yes. to something new. Yes. Always. Even when we think, believe that we are not ascending, yes. we still are sending. And even we, if we, if we hate, hate ourselves, the world will unconditionally love, loves us so much. So even show us that it hates us, even, but it doing it in a loving way. Yes, and there are those who do. Yes. Thank you, Gabriel. Yes, you have summed it up, what I was sharing. Thank you. There are those who descend at times, or it feels like they are descending. But think of the roots of a tree. Sometimes they have to descend in order for the nourishment to come up through the tree. They have to go down deeper. So it is not really... A descending, although it looks to be from an external point of view. Yes. Thank you. Yes, we are all always in movement. Everything is in movement. Everything is in a state of growth. Even 
so-called dying is a state of growth because it is a transformation to another dimension, another energy, another level. Everything is in movement. And there is a possibility to experience love in every single thing, in every single action, in every single interaction. It is the now, the possible now. It is only here. And this is what Roxy and Will and Mary, Maria and Dan have been trying to tell Safira all weekend. So she will look back on this video and she will laugh. <laughs> <laughs> she will laugh and dance and play and shift and shift. Yes. You just you tell her to just breathe in. Everybody can just breathe in and just feel the unconditional love through the universe. It surrounds you and it's for you. It's all there for you. Just bring it in. It's here for you. It doesn't fight you, bite you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Is there anything else? Because I know that Roxy uh, wants to also share with you today one of her entities. I have one last question for you. Yes. The energies on Earth have shifted over the past month or so, how do you see the new energies available and how can we as humans take advantage of those energies? Hmm. Yes, the energies are shifting and those who are unable to bring them in, perhaps they go through some kind of discomfort, but eventually they will also be able to move with it. There are those who will leave the earth at this time because they cannot resonate with the shift and this is also fine because they will continue to grow on another level. How to take advantage of the shift? Well, I think that you already are taking advantage of it. I don't think you have to do anything different to take advantage of it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Perfect sense. There's nothing you need to do. Perfect it sense. comes to you yeah. and you breathe it in. It permeates your cells. Perhaps you feel a higher sense of joy and oneness. That would be the most beautiful, beautiful result is that you feel oneness with all things and can feel the joy in all of it and can feel the compassion and the empathy. It would be nice if, dear Will, more would be moved to more service. Service is taking this energy in. is not only for us as individuals. It is to take it in and to serve, to apply all the understanding you have to those in compassion and empathy around you. So they see your shift, they feel it, they want to also experience it and are so moved by it. Does that make sense? Perfect. I, I, again, I shifted and I appreciate your viewpoint. I resonate highly with it. Much love, much appreciation. Much love. Much love. Oh, yes, the thing is, if we could pass on to you the absolute compassion for each of you, if you could share that more with each other, if you can see that there are truly no barriers, if you love any enemy, quote, unquote, enemy that you feel is your barrier, you can love that enemy and get past the barriers that you all have up. Well, well, it's not all, but I say generally speaking, we see so many barriers between each 
of the human races and groups and peoples on the earth. It breaks our hearts to see it. So we are happy when those barriers get broken down. And one way to break them down is to breathe in compassion, shift your understanding, and shift and love your enemy, and be compassionate, and serve, and serve. And everything starts to transform around you. <coughs> I just yes. want to jump in and say thank Excellent. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Excuse me? Johannes has a question. Yes. Go ahead, Johannes. I don't have a question, actually, because this just answered a lot of these questions that I've been going through for. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm just, that is wonderful. Yes. You know, love you for, 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 for what you are and what you do. And I have to leave, but I'm not talking. Me too. Expressing gratitude. Oh. Oh, Johannes. We are grateful to you. We are grateful to you. Because every human entity which reaches out and brings more light into themselves and brings more light into those around them, oh, we are so grateful to observe this. Yes, we are. Because we have compassion. And we want to see this light which is coming in permeate and transform and shift. And then, oh, it is so great. Then we feel it won't be long now. It won't be long now. And this gives us great joy. It gives us great joy. So you and your shifting, and each of you and your shifting, brings us great joy. You need to understand that. You bring us joy. <laughs> you bring us joy. <laughs> Oh, it is so wonderful. It is. Okay. <laughs> well, oh, yes, it is wonderful. So, my dear friends, play, dance, sing, shift, serve, love your enemy, grow, move, be in oneness with all things in this moment, in the now. But believe that if your mind does not allow that, then it is coming, and it is coming right soon, as some would say. This is Arusha. I will leave now. Bye. Much Thank love. You. Much yeah. love and joy. Thank much you. compassion. Yeah. Much love. Love, love and play. Lakesh, too. <laughs> we all love oh, Lakesh. Yes, Lakesh would say probably the same things as me. He is very happy. He is very happy. Much love to all of you from him as well. Okay. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah. Hang on, meditate. I'm going to go to the teacher. Okay. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That was really good. Awesome. Awesome. Welcome back, Safira. Thank you. Aww. Thank you. <laughs> that was good, guys. <laughs> Absolutely fabulous. Thank you. That was Arusha. But yeah, you allowed it. It was great. Awesome. You allowed it. How long? How long has Absolutely that been? Fabulous. How long has it been, uh, Sophia, oh. since last time you brought uh, her through the energy? Thank you. I'm yeah. sorry, Brian. I couldn't hear you, hon. How how long? How many months? Or how long has it been since you last time you brought her through or that energy through? <laughs> I don't remember. The last time I channeled anyone, I think it was Rujan. About the site to site um, traveling, I wow. think that was a few months ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yes. Well, it's really it's really clear and very understanding, and it's your it wonderful. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you. It was very clear. Thank you. I'm very happy. I'm happy. Yes. Yes. I I love I love it and. Feel free to connect to the loving enemies. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be, mm -hmm. feel like you don't deserve it. You deserve it. You exist. Mm -hmm. You deserve it. It's here for you. 
Love it. Like taking a look in the mirror, love yourself. You deserve everything. All this information belongs. It's all with you. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Don't be, don't be afraid of yourself. I, I know okay. you are. I'm <laughs> don't be afraid. What? You're fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, because uh, you, you did change. You chose. Yes, I did. She did. I you chose. You chose. I chose, baby. Boom. Kaboom. Boom. 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 Cool. All right, I'm out there. I'm going to go. Awesome. Excuse me. I'm going to go and ground myself with a little. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, awesome, baby. Oh, yeah, I'm going to join you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Hi out there in TV land, YouTube land, we're like that land. Do we want a microphone? I don't think so. Hey, guys, can you hear me okay at this level? Brian? Yeah. You, you guys can hear okay? I can hear you. Yeah, There's a safety can. can hear us quite well. So. <laughs> I, think, I think we can hear Guru Dan easy if he speaks, too. Say something, you. Something. Something. Yeah, Holy we God, hear God, everybody in the sofa is okay. Very loud. <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> and also those those in the by on the back hugging. It looks oh, no. amazing. Mm. I was gonna say if you wanna. Yeah. Go ahead. Mm. Come back and just slide the door open a little bit. That was some good stuff, wasn't it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I didn't get to say thank you, but it's okay. <laughs> Just, so it's, just, just yeah. presence was like completely, you know, shifted yeah. my day. I know. <laughs> yeah, that was really good stuff. It was. So stand by, everyone's getting their coffee, water, stretching their legs idea. The mission music. What's that? Here's the intermission music. Mm. You guys ready? Yeah. Hey, Safir, don't just uh, come back in whenever you're ready. No big deal, okay? Oh, are you gonna wait for me then? No, go ahead and smoke. I'll be right back. Yeah, take your time. Thank you. No, no rush. We don't care. We're gonna start, and then we'll just get on into it. Cool. Hey, you know what? Can you toss me a pillow? Sure. Get <laughs> pillowed. The princess and the pea. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the princess and the pea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> and now the dogs are playing. <laughs> no. Get him. No. All right. No, no. I'm going to put you in the bedroom. Okay, now we have two dogs barking. I think we're going to have to wait for something. I don't know what it is. Are you done, Jingles? All right. What you put out is, is what you get back. Exactly, and so I'm putting out dog barks. I understand. Very good. Leave it open. Yeah, that's good there. Cool. Greetings once again to the collective. This is Osiphius from the Oversoul Collective Fire. I bid you all a good day. And greetings to the room. How are you all? Doing very well. Excellent. Awesome. Greetings out there in the YouTube world, internet world, which is truly our world because we're all here and now. Excellent. All right. Let us begin our journey. We will have a time, if you choose, to ask some questions and answers at the end of the idea of the impartation we have brought forth in this manner and this now. The idea was brought forth that of rocks in by that of will. What is the age of Aquarius? What are the energies? What's going on? The idea of that idea, let's say, that was just channeled, the blue Pleiadian, gave the idea of truly whatever it is to you in the moment. Be the energy, truly. But there is an idea of a definition. There is an idea behind the construct of what you call the age of Aquarius. Does not humanity work in what you call definitions? Of course, because that's how you identify. Remember, entities, you were a blank sheet of paper upon birth. 
You had no idea of anything, truly. You had your instinct to move you, to ask for food, to open your eyes, to move your hand, to learn to crawl naturally, much as the oak tree grows, hmm? with no effort. But then the idea of self-awareness came along and you wanted to understand, for that is the idea of humanity, to expand the idea of your mind. But out of the fear, definitions came for identification of understanding your reality. It was a safe harbor for you with definitions. So definitions are beliefs, and they are important. But the ideas of the definitions of old are no longer now needed in many cases. But security says, yes, they are. And that's part of the game and the illusion that you guys are shedding now today, is you're waking up to another choice, another self. So back to the idea of the age of Aquarius. You set this up in the idea of what you call your zodiac council, astrological council, the idea of human, let's say, construct, hmm? a permission slip, if you will, a very old one of the idea of astrology. Oh, yes. Because once humanity woke up to spirituality, remember, in this state of being, what you called your dream walkers, hmm? you spent little time down here. You were in the dream, walking upon what you call planet Earth at that time. You didn't spend much time in here, for you have not idealized the separation at that time. But when you idealized separation in the idea of this physical being you see in the mirror every day, this construct of humanity, this forgetfulness state of being, then you had to give yourself a reason to wake up. And that reason was something beyond what you saw every day, what you covet every day. This is my reality. This is where the water comes from. This is the food that is available to me, so I eat it. I knew nothing else. Until discovery came. But discovery is represented in the mirror. Discovery is a different choice. Representing to my right and to my left other ideas of entities representing change. Mm, most certainly. So in that idea, we were all representing ourselves in the mirror in whatever fashion to expand ourselves. Animals, trees, nature is a great teacher. We all know this. But you needed to wake up to beyond yourself as just a mere human. Zodiac was one of the big permission steps. The astrological council. Hmm? Times were put in that would affect the spiritual movement of your civilizations. Hmm? Your tribes, your Mayans, your Incas, your Aztecs, your Egyptians, your Persians, all of them spiritual because they knew there was something more than what they saw they felt so the idea of the astrological this is just one sliver there are many other ideas out there so don't think it's all encompassing the astrological council in the now represented the idea of themselves and being birthed in a particular idea and then it mutated as all ideas do mutate transform, expand into what you call your planetary movements, your Mars going direct, hmm? things like that that help influence you. It's permission. So then the idea of what you call your timelines, your periods of times of your signs, the age of Taurus, the age of Aries, the age of Pisces. Now here we are in the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Truly, Aquarius has started. We all knew what it was. They couldn't write the song any better. Hmm? It is an ascension of the human species. Truly, that's what it means. It is a trigger point to know that you are now the water bearers. What does that mean? We will echo the idea of Bashar, channeled through the entity you understand as Daryl Inca. You are three states of being. 
You are steam in your highest state of being. This is only translated for human concepts, so relax. You're not truly that, but it is a picture that you can understand. In the idea of what you understand, your physical body, you are frozen. In the idea of spirituality, up here, your next step, you are now the water bearer. You are in the age of Aquarius. You are pouring water upon your own selves. Hmm? You are melting the ice, and you are ascending, let's say, into the next idea of yourself. You are spirit. So the water bearer is now pouring upon all of you to melt the physical body, if you will. This is metaphoric, of course. And melt the body to see what lies underneath you. The eternal light being. So the energies are in place. There was, let's say, much idea behind energies for many, many, many thousands of, let's say, pockets of information, group soul pods, if you will, around the planets over, let's say, about the last 70 years, bringing this into play to where you were seeing it today. People putting practicums into place of what you call a spawning of the zodiacs, a fad in a lot of your ideas. But truly, it shifted this collective and this collective and this collective to where all those energies in this now are now connected in one way or another. Not physically, in the most cases, but feeling. So let's talk about what that means. There is an underlying tug, a current, a tone, a vibration, a knowing. That is, let's say, now in play. And that is you connected to everything. You may be fighting for your limitations by, I don't see what it is. But that's okay. That's evolution. You just sit back and understand your knowing about now, the new connection, the new energies that are now available to the collective. But I would like to offer this idea. It is not new. It is humanity raising themselves to the point of being aware of what's already and always has been there. We didn't give you the new energies. You woke up to what's already there. That's the ascension. It is humanity's own evolution of self through all of your choices. All of them. All of them. All of them. Of each individual I am co-creating the collective whole. Choosing their love for themselves to create a higher truth for each of the individual singularities. Leading to a mass awareness of the energies that are perceived, which is fine, as new, but truly have been waiting for you to catch up to it. In the age of Aquarius, using that as a definition of a practicum, giving many, many entities through the years, accelerated at your 1900 level, truly, to birth into the 20s, the big spirituality rage around the world. To get excited about the age of Aquarius. To get excited and pass on to their children. Not me. Physically speaking? Hmm, no. DNA. Vibration. Encoding. And the energy is now here. And you think of it and feel it and get it into your reality and go, oh, it's the age of Aquarius. And here goes your DNA going pop, 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 pop. Oh, I'm here. Holy cow. So this is you pouring the water upon yourself. You are thawing out this physical idea body. You are becoming spirit. You are ascending the species. Look for not when, because it already happened a long time ago. When was that? Right now. Oh, yes. So the age of Aquarius, 
was a permission slip, a definition encompassed many eons ago by the idea of the Astrological Council to bring forth this idea of spirituality and knowing inside, not definable by the coveting eyes of humanity's limitation, to understand beyond itself and urge itself to put together the system of the zodiacs to understand themselves personality-wise. Future, love, wealth, career, all of these move the spirit. All of them go beyond what's the norm. Status quo. As we just heard about movement, you want to move. Thought is movement. Don't define or limit yourself to action in the physical realm idea. Movement only. All thought is movement. All of it. All of it. You're moving all the time. And these urgings that you felt as a collective whole way back when brought you all to this now to understand what it means to be a part of the age of Aquarius. To realize the energies that have been waiting for you and have no worries, they're not impatient because they're right here, right now. And they've always been when? Right here. Right, right now. now. Booyah. So this is the idea from our perspective and it worked magically. It is all an encompassing system of permission slips, beliefs, and definitions that woke you up, that help accelerate you, to give you an idea when you're looking at the drudgery of what you call the illusion of life and through your believing belief systems, take those beautiful moments and distort them to pain. And you needed to find a way to escape and look away from the pain for you could not handle it. And you created ideas of spirituality. Very good. Good girl. Creating those ideas of spirituality so you can feel something different so your life wasn't just that. And you found it. And you found it in yourselves. You took a species. I don't let's say, want to harp on this, but I do, so I'm going to. You got to understand humanity. You didn't know anything at the beginning. Nothing. Nothing. You had no idea that you were God. And there was, the game was, we can't tell you, which is you, your higher self, the collective whole, up here, and all the help, can tell you that you're God. We can't. That's the game. And we didn't. So how did you wake up? Through love, through yourselves, through your, 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 your eternal passion for, and compassion, thank you, for the idea of yourselves. You don't see the grandness of that. You can't put it on a measurable scale from up here. That you took a species that had no idea, zero, zero, zero idea that you were an individual whole. And you discount this a lot. It's like, yeah, mm, yeah, awesome. Bullshit. For as much of what you've put the entire collective, all of you going through that love and compassion for one individual species known as humanity, there is no greater idea in all of the nows to take it, wake up a species. Not only to wake them up, but to give them the probability and possibility that they are an individual creator of all of creation. The idea of your fourth density civilizations that are helping, we knew from the start we were awake. That's fourth density. Third density, there are many ideas of limitation, none greater than humanity. And we will remind you of this until the ascension has occurred in your space time now. We want you to never discount the great service you've done for the idea of humanity. Each and every one of you took it from nothing to hear, awake, ready to move into the next density. Excellent job.
We will always share this because we are most honored to be here. I get to play in this playground. Booyah. This is our idea of what you would understand is the age of Aquarius. How's that, Will? Totally awesome. Totally awesome. Booyah. 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 So, do we have any questions in the room out there? Hmm? Ryan? Hmm. I Anybody? have a question. Hmm. So, in this new age of Aquarius... Can you speak up, please, for, oh, sorry. for these in people? This, in this age of Aquarius, mm -hmm. are we going to finally see peace between nations, as predicted? Well, we the idea of this age is 2,000 years. In the, if you want to put it in this age, then most certainly you will see peace on Earth. Truly. That timeline, from our perspective, will occur. So within the next 2,000 years, you're going to have what you call a global unity. Yes. Will it happen in your lifetime? That is a probability for you to experience. Can you please talk about the second coming of Jesus, that he is going to come and set up a new kingdom? Because this whole idea of the new age and... Um, you know, the conflict in the Middle East, the, you know, the theories about conflict in the Middle East, mm -hmm. and through that, Jesus will come and set up his kingdom. Well, it is not going to be a Jesus. It's not going to be a person. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the idea of what Christ represented at the time. Mm -hmm. I am all that I am. Mm -hmm. I am love, representing the idea of others to be love. Jesus never wanted followers, ever. Jesus wanted to say, hey, be like me. Don't follow me. Yes. But that's okay. But are there going to be those who, you know, we often need an example in front of us. Do you not have an example right now? I call her Sephira in the mirror. <laughs> that's the Christ conscience. Yes. That's someone loving themselves, acting upon their joy as Christ. Don't put Christ on a pedestal because Christ woke up. That was his idea. Christ is you. Christ is the idea sitting to, once again, the right across and left of me. All of us are what Christ represented. If you want a Christ conscience idea, can you think about right now if Christ came to earth again? Yes. Okay. Now, if you look at the human construct of what you call religion at this space time now, it would be most certainly, let's say, counterproductive. Because they would worship automatically the next coming of the Christ. Because the idea of the Christ conscious is to put Christ in you. Bring your authority back. I am the individual I am that the Bible spoke of. Not I am the fearful God up here going I'm a badass ego. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So if one represents, no, that won't happen. All represent the idea that's what dawns what you call that new kingdom, that thousand years of peace idea that's constructed in what you call your predictions. Revelations, I believe it is. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. There are potentials idea of what you would call someone that may be deemed a Christ conscious. We are now going to echo what you call Seth, a very good friend of ours. Mm -hmm. Those ideas will be told by another say, yes, you are the next Christ. None of these potentiators, at the time of your last Christ, there were 37 potential Christs, Saul and the idea of John being two of them. The collective did not accept them as the Christ. The collective accepted idea of what you call Jesus. That became the Christ as a conscience, what? Collective, what? Belief system, yes. Therefore, that reality played out. This idea of what you call your awoken Christ conscience, the ones that are now are awakening, when we speak of awoken, we're talking an ascended master. That idea of the next ascended master will not represent a Christ conscience, although someone will want him to be that role. But that role cannot be played out, for it will be, let's say, a counterproductive once again to what is uh, acceptable to humanity's framework. However, it will represent what is possible in humanity. 
which Christ wanted to show. Yes. That we are all eternal love. We are all the unity of one. We are all the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We are all individual part of the whole idea of creation. Make sense? But the idea of what you call your biblical terms, once again, it was diced and sliced, and it was truly written. The last King James Version was written by 12 priests in what you call England. The original book and the original other books all left out. There was a lot of information. But then again, that's not a big deal. Why? Because it's coming back. That's why you put yourself Pope Francis in place, because he's going to unlock the fault, and he's going to let out the idea. Awesome. And it is going to be when the collective is ready to handle that idea. Because right now, there are billions of people on earth relying on their entire life as this God is above me. And when that becomes a falsehood, that causes a really big rift in themselves. So you don't want to have that sudden energy of negativity and sorrow and pain on the collective. Make sense? Yes. As the collective is moving itself as a unity of whole and the minds are shifting to the possibility that I am the Christ conscience through my own self, instead of being that through the Son to get to the Father, I am the creator whole, that kind of idea. When there is enough in play to be a stabilization, then more and more what you call, what you call let's say, conspiracy theories, mm -hmm. Being released because the collective's ready to handle it. You don't want to jolt yourself into negative shock, if you will. Make sense? Yes. So the Christ conscience that is now birthed upon your earth, there are three right now, truly, but there will be more. And the ones that choose to awaken to become awoken, in other words, a God that's well aware, he's a God with zero doubt, not one shed, not one sliver of fear of the illusion in them, they are whole with themselves, representing the human, being a human, birthed what you call from the canal, not an incarnated, let's say, illusionary human, which is like an earth angel, that kind of idea. But one that is birthed from birth, from forgetfulness, to complete awoken, state of being, ascended master in your terms. When that idea represents, hmm, that's when you know, but there are many that will come. And whoever chooses to awaken is a potential. That's why we give ourselves many. Make sense? Yes. Thank you. Excellent. You're welcome. Thank you, Safira. You're welcome. Absolutely thank you. This is exactly the conversation I wish to present. Awesome. Excellent. You were perfect. So you just you. gave the actually, I, I think you just explained ascension as well. Yes. No doubt at all. Zero. Zero doubt. Okay. You are 100% perfect with yourself. Yes. We will echo the idea of another friend of ours. His name is Ramtha. That idea said this. Ascension occurs within your own self when you would rather be nowhere and nobody else and where you are and who you are right now all the time. Make sense? Yes. That is liberation. In my Shoo, freedom, isn't it? <laughs> Booyah. Yes. yes. Freedom. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Good stuff. <laughs> Any other questions? If not, no worries. Out there? Beautiful. All right, this is all we have in the idea of that will, and of course, Safira bringing forth that epic information. Booyah. We will bid you a good day. This is Osipius. I don't know. Gratitude. Thank you, Osipius. Namaste. Namaste. Cool beans. Oh, my goodness. That was yeah. great shit. Absolutely fabulous. Awesome. Safira, awesome. you rock. Oh. You absolutely rock. Oh. You cool, Brian. <laughs> this was exactly a great explanation of Ascension. the age of Aquarius, which is everyone finding the Christ consciousness within themselves, mm -hmm. understanding that they are God, and that there's enough people on the planet 
that have this possibility Bingo. Already, already, which is causing Bingo. the age of Aquarius. Yes, okay? yes, yes, yes. There's yes. enough people on the planet that have it as a possibility that a certain percentage will wake up and be it, and then more will just wake up because they're in the presence of somebody else who has woken up. Yes. And, yes. and what, I just thought what Ozithia said last night, what we represent to the others to make a different choice. And Absolutely. We're, and we're representing the idea of the Christ conscience. We all don't have to go around claiming I'm the next Messiah. Right. I am the representation of what Christ represented. Love. Right. Beautiful example. Yeah. What's that, baby? Be like be be the example. Yes. Yeah. Live it. Represent something yes. different. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why expression and self-expression is so important on the planet. You're right. Absolutely. Good stuff. All right, guys. This is Roxy from what you call San Antonio. We're gonna stop, uh, hop off the air, and. Uh, Enjoy our nows. Thank you all for tuning in out there. Bye, everybody. And uh, we're going to put this up on Hukalo TV in a little bit. So wow. I don't think they really need to know that. I'm just like chatting. Yeah. Hi, fun. how's it's everything? Fun. Exactly. Today? <laughs> all right, everyone. I love you Bye. so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Much love. Much love. Much love. Stay there, Brian.